Now, here comes the music. So this is the DJ Roundtable uh, up on Twitch. I want to thank Matt right here, DJ Salsas, for coming in. And I uh, was hoping to get a few more people in here. I know that we're switching dates and everything that going over from uh, uh, from uh, Instagram over to Twitch. Some people are not used to it yet. This is the first one. So I'm hoping that a few people will join us in a few minutes and we'll go from there. Uh, the DJ Roundtable is an open format service and it is on Twitch Live. If you're watching this, it's either the rebroadcast or it is on YouTube. If you want to come over to Twitch and follow us on Twitch, you can follow my Twitch page. It's Buddy uh, Twitch page. So it's TBM, so Tom Boy Mary Productions, and it's underscore Buddy. So if you go to TBM Productions underscore Buddy, you'll find us, follow the page, and you'll see when we go live on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time, which is a little earlier for Matt, so that way he can have dinner and not be uh, leaving the, the stream halfway through. Happy uh, driving. One of the many reasons why, because again, I, I always felt bad doing that to you, man. I know you got a lot of things going on, and you are one of the busiest DJs I know. Uh, gig logs you have coming out of your ears. Um, yeah. And I want to talk to you about uh, your latest experience with your new speakers. We are talking a little bit before the camera started about your EAW speakers and about the sound system at a club that you've gone to a few times there out there in California and how the sound system is there. Um, wanted to talk also about the fact that uh, why you feel <coughs> why you feel EAW is the right speaker for you. And one thing I always say to people is you need to have the right tools. And if you feel something works for you, that's great. Matt is an established DJ and has a good amount of uh, funds available for him to buy the nicer stuff. If you're a DJ just starting out and you have not been able to afford EAWs or JBLs or some of the nicer speakers and you want to have a Behringer or something else less expensive, not a problem. This is stuff that we deal with. We've all started somewhere. The, the goal is to you know build yourself up and get better. With that said, Matt, go ahead and, and share your experience with those uh, great EAW speakers that you were in love with. Uh, yeah, uh, real quick, I uh, I asked if uh, DJ Rowdy wanted to join us, and he said he he could hop on. So uh, I sent him the invite link. I don't know if I need to send him. I don't know if he needs to come from you directly. Or... No, no, he, it, it should it should work. It's it's Zoom, so it should be able to. It was just it was just pop up the top saying uh, admit or not. So just admit him into the room, and there you go. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I've been looking for. Here's so, I mean, I've had. There he is. There's DJ Rowdy. Take a second to connect. There he is. <laughs> DJ Rowdy, how are you, sir? Well, we can't hear us. Take a second. Hey, what's up? DJ Rowdy, what's going on, man? Not much, you know, just chilling. Look at the high school bedroom. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, does your wall vibrate Seahawks. and you have the little magnetic little guys going down trying to get a touchdown or whatever? Or, yeah. Uh, oh, that, there you go. Oh, too bad, he, too bad there, he's yeah. not on the Seahawks anymore, right? No, uh, Marshawn Lynch <laughs> or uh, what is that, Russell? Russ, yeah, right there. Who did get? Who did get traded to again? The Broncos. Oh God, <laughs> Russell Wilson. I do. I do think he, you know. Talk about football is is a good quarterback and. I'm kind of glad that, you know, um, he got traded to another team because I think he has more of a chance going to another team and maybe doing something because he's it's kind of his twilight of his career. You know, he's yeah. been around in the NFL quite a while, and uh, we can talk about NFL stuff all night long, trust me. <laughs> I get my wife in here, Tracy. She's, she's a big football fan too. <clears throat> and I feel, I feel that him going to uh, Denver – will uh, actually help his career out and help him out. And we, I wish the best of luck. Even though I'm a, I'm a diehard Chicago Bears fan, you know, and unfortunately our Bears are where the Bears are and not much I could talk about that. But uh, we'll see this year. It's it, it's, it's kind of one thing, you know, and it's, that's a great thing. I mean, one, one great thing also, I'm a Sox fan too for baseball. And the Cubs, Cubs fans always say, oh, wait till next year, wait till next year. 
that's why I kind of feel the Bears fans have been like, oh, wait till next year, wait till next year. We'll get another quarterback. We'll get something else. I, I, I feel it's the owners, but that's that's a whole nother thing. Matt, I'm sorry to take your thunder away, but you're about to talk about your EAWs. Uh, DJ Rowdy, um, Matt was about to talk about his EAW speakers and about how he feels about them. Um, and, and is there a wedding involved in the EAW that you can get married to them? Or? Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I needed something to replace my 10. Well, I didn't need something, but I mean, my 10.2s, they're great, but I crank it at every event. And I mean, those were starting to clip and they're nice small speakers and they're really loud, but they're just not, they don't have that full balanced range sound that like a 15 inch cabinet would have, uh, even if you run them in high pass. So like, I like, I like the 10.2s. I've been using them for a long time, but I needed something a little bigger and better. And uh, I ended up selling my 10.2s. The market is, you know, very hot for QSC right now. So I bought them. I think when I bought them, they were 650 a piece and the cases were free. I got them on a promotion and I sold a pair of them with the cases for 1600 uh, three years later. So um, yeah, so that, that was good. And then I, I started with the RCFs. I, I thought the nine, the art nine series would be good. They don't sound very good. Um, RCF has this weird hissing sound in the highs that maybe my ears just hear and nobody else's does, but I have a friend who has the J Vox something or else or Evox. No, he's got the Evox 12s, the big, the big column arrays that RCF has. And I still heard that same sound from those at his wedding. And um, yeah, so they have the 945 is what I wanted. It wasn't available. So I got the 935. Now it's available. <laughs> yeah, now it's available. And it's, it's a very awkward, big, bulky speaker. It's not weighted right. And it's plastic. And so it gets scuffed very easily. It doesn't feel it. It's very heavy and it's hard to like lift above. And I'm used to lifting my 60 pound Yamaha speakers. No problem because they're very, they're balanced really well. And so when I was at NAM, I heard the EAWs. Initially, I heard the AC6s, which is their their version of a column array. Uh, it's only top top and middle end. It doesn't have low end. And that those sound amazing, but they're also 12 grand a piece. So obviously, I wasn't going to get those. Um, but I did hear I did hear their point source RS 153s, and uh, which is their 15 inch. And even though it's 1500 watts, it has an SPL of 138, which is I think among the highest 15 inch powered speaker on the market, I think, before going into, you know, L Acoustics or Martin or anything like that. And uh, so I heard them, they sounded great and uh, ordered them through Pro Sound and Stage Lighting, PSSL. It wasn't supposed to ship till August. And then he called me a couple weeks ago, literally a week after ordering them. He's like, hey, we got a shipment coming in. They're made, they're fully manufactured here in the US in Boston. Um, so I, you know, they are on top of it. They don't have to wait for parts from China. Got them in two weeks and, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they sound, they sound incredible as a full range. The, the other reason I got them was I do some, a lot of these outdoor estate weddings. You know, I just did one this past weekend, which was at somebody's private property mansion in Rancho Santa Fe. And, you know, I always bring a sub, but the problem is sometimes you get these neighbors that like to complain at eight 30 at night, even though the noise ordinance doesn't start till 10. And they're like, uh, uh, so like this weekend, the cops are here. Can you turn the base down? And I'm like, sure, no problem. So I just disconnect the sub, plug it, plug the, the, the XLR directly into the speakers instead of going through the sub and I'm still getting a good full range sound out of the speakers with enough bass, you know, out of that 15. But I mean, honestly, the amount of sound that those can push out is mind blowing. They are so loud and so crystal clear. And I mean, they're just, and the other thing that, so like besides the sound, it's a well-built box. It's got comfortable handles. It's made of birch. So it's actually not like the weight distribution. It's the same weight as the RCFs, 53 pounds but it feels way lighter and it's way easier to manage. The handles are really well made. They've got the fly points on top. So I'm able to mount my little, you know, my little uh, lighting bar right into the, the fly points and, uh, and the, the bags that they come with, well, they don't come with bags, but you can get bags for them that EAW makes super padded, really nice. And uh, they're just, they're, they're great speakers. I love them. And uh, I, I love them so much. I ordered a, a, the 12s as well. So the 153s are the 15 inch and then the 123s are the 12 inch and uh, they're 1500 watts. And somebody I was talking to today on Instagram was like, you know, he didn't understand how a 1500 watt speaker is louder than a 2000 watt JBL SRX, you know, 815 or whatever. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, no, well, it's not SPL. SPL yeah, is the driver. I told him it's like, and he had never heard of SPL. He's like, I don't even know what that means. He's like, I thought it was just wattage. I'm like, no, these, it's all about SPL. And I told him like, 
he was, he works with Cleveland Terry and I, you know, their, their company, they have a bunch of those thump goes and I'm like, go listen to the thump go. That's a 200 watt speaker. And that thing could crank for a 200 watt speaker. And uh, yeah. So um, I actually did a side by side on, I sent Rowdy the picture of like the little Mackie thump go with the EAW. And I, you know, I don't like Mackie products, but that thump go, I played uh, Sam Smith, lay me down. Uh, the vocal quality on that Mackie thump go is about as good as that EAW. Uh, you only lose it when it comes to like a full range balance sound, but pure like high, high and mid range vocals out of that. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell one from the other, but uh, those, yeah, those EAWs, they're insanely loud. I don't even get them to, I could barely get the signal light to come on. The status light comes on when it's on the signal light. Like I, and I have them like 70% of the way up and I'm only like, on my Behringer, I have it three quarters of the way up and I use my main on my mixer. And I mean, I'm at about, I don't know, under half, under half and it's super loud and it's not even hitting the signal light. I mean, those things are, if you want a loud ass speaker and I always tell people like the max SPL, the way that some of these companies measure it, they take the base into factors. So with RCF uh, or not even RCF, but like QSC, the 12.2 has a higher SPL than the 10.2 because it's calculating that base hitting. Uh, with uh, the EAWs, they don't they don't take into effect into they don't counter in that sub the 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 woofer hitting. They basically the max SPL for the 12 inch and the 15 inch is exactly the same. It's the same components and everything. The only difference is you're getting a I think a two and a half versus a three inch voice coil, and it's a 12 versus a 15. But because they're not really measuring loudness out of the sub, it's the same across the board. So. Uh, yeah, I, but I first heard EAW, there's a club here called Avalon and they have, they've always had a custom sound system by EAW. They just redesigned it and they have six subwoofers under the stage that have a 40 inch cone in them. So 40 inch sub with three 12 inch subs also inside them as well. And let me tell you the bass from that is like, it, it's to the point where your voice is distorted when you try to talk to somebody. That's how tuned in that sound system is. And that bass is it's the best bass I've ever heard. Probably next to like the only the only thing that comes close is I went to Coachella out here and they have a sound system that's de designed by this guy Dave Rat who makes Rat subwoofers and uh, those are like custom made super subs and they use them at the Sahara tent which is not really a tent but it's a Sahara stage and they have those subs everywhere and that bass is really good too but that's outdoors so it's a little harder to measure but uh, yeah EAWs. It's built well. It looks. It's a sexy speaker, um, and it's just yeah. I, uh, I I love them. So I uh, very happy. And it's a six year warranty. It's the same as QSC. So you get a six year warranty as well. And the thing is that a lot of people. Uh, Brian has read the thing about it on his channel, and uh, they talked about a disc jockey news a few times about people get this. They get consumed about wattage and consumption of mm -hmm. power, and they look at how much wattage something can consume as max wattage. It, it's like looking at a hairdryer, it says 1000 watts or a microwave, 1000 watts. That's maximum power draw, it's gonna draw a thousand watts. It doesn't mean the output is a thousand watts. Mm -hmm. It means that it is drawing up to a thousand watts of power. And your actual great measure is like you said before, is SPL. And a lot of people don't know that, they don't look at that and go, okay, fine, great, let's, let's, let's look at SPL. Let's look at the pressure wave. Let's look at the sound that is actually coming out of the speaker and say, okay, fine, great. You know, again, JBL, which I'm a fan for JBL because I have JBL stuff. The SRX drivers are different than the PRX, the EN series. The SPLs, you look at the SPLs, are all different. Now, EAW does a lot of outdoor events. They're more of a true commercial speaker. Now the SRX is a good speaker. And you, you can say it's a commercial speaker. PRX is kind of like a little between the two and EI is kind of a beginner. Now you go to the VTX on JBL. That's what you're equal to in uh, EAW. And that's a flyable speaker. And that is what you usually see in arrays. EAW also does a lot of array speakers. So they take that array technology. When you go to a concert, you see the full array hanging from the ceiling and put that into a, a you know a 12-inch or 15-inch cabinet. Um, RCF, which I run the, the uh, Evolve, uh, not Evolve, uh, I run the RCF uh, J8s. Um, I really never heard a hissing noise 
on them. Um, they're, I feel, I feel they're very clean, very clear. Again, I, I have JBLs. I've listened to other speakers and I feel they're very well balanced. And again, the most important thing is that, especially you, Matt, you have to do what you feel is best for your clients. And you feel EAW is a good speaker. That's the way to run with DJ Rowdy. I know that uh, we talked to a few times before. I know you're not a huge fan of uh, line arrays either uh, versus I am, but um, what, what do you, what do you usually do? What do you usually uh, run? I got the two RCF HD 12 MK fours. And then uh, I have my seismic audio speaker still, but I never use them. I just rent them out to people. And then I have my uh, QSC KS118, which I have for sale right now. Because <coughs> I'm looking to go to a dual 18. Because I'm at weddings and stuff. They don't ever have the sub. They never get, they never want bass. It's always like the noise ordinance thing. So I never even charge them or bring my sub to any weddings. So I don't feel like I need a single 18 anymore. Especially all the parties I do. I like, I need dual 18s. So. I've been shopping around for dual 18s right now. Once I get that QSC sold, I'm sure it'll sell pretty fast. So. Speaking of speaking of dual 18s, uh, uh, some sad news. Uh, so they were, RCF had informed IDJ now that my dual 18s were on par to ship later this, well, last month. And then IDJ now contacted me on Friday and said that uh, now the, the ship date is uh, to be determined. So oh apparently God. there's some sort of, some sort of manufacturer i had no problems getting the 21s they took three months but i still got them the 18s are just i, I don't know what's going on and and I, at this rate i'll have like yeah uh, these are the, yeah i have the 9006s these are the 8007s i think are the dual 18s i don't know how they title them uh but yeah, so it's uh it's unfortunate but uh we'll, well be here one, 8, thing, 8, one thing with uh, rcf it is a Italian made speaker in Italy and getting stuff from Europe. It's, it's all the supply chain issues we hear from either Chinese made products or uh, Japanese made products or European made products. It, it's hard to get stuff over from other parts of the world. Now, it, Europe should be technically easier because the East Coast, uh, like Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, New York, those ports are very much open. The shipping companies, you know, can come from Europe much quicker and get unloaded versus California. China has a huge influence. The ports of like, you know, uh, of Los Angeles and San Diego and even like uh, up in San Francisco, and you go north uh, into uh, Washington State and to Oregon. Uh, those ports on the West Coast are just so heavily burdened with so much traffic that come from China because there's a lot of pride that comes from China, you know. And they're just over overwhelmed with that product versus the ones in the East Coast actually have more bandwidth. But it, it could be a question of getting ships. It could be a question of personnel. Whatever it is, unfortunately, it's, it, it's going to take some time before you get your um, dual 18s. But you, you, you'll suffer with your dual 21s, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I'm using them. I'm using, them. Everything. I'm using them for a – I got a quinceanera this weekend, so I'll be using them for that. Uh, and, nice. and, uh, I'll be able to, to fully like unleash the, the EAWs with like a, cause they, they do it. They do overpower a single 18, like, uh, pretty significantly. I I've got them, you know, kind of tuned in pretty well for like weddings and stuff, but they're, they're such loud speakers are really meant to be used with like a dual, a dual sub. Um, but they, uh, yeah, EAW is a, a, a U.S. brand, so they're able to, you know, get stuff out and, and have accurate timelines. So, like, when I ordered them, uh, instead of an estimated date, it was the guarantee date of August 8th or something was, like, when they were going to ship them. And then they actually delivered them, you know, almost uh, a month and a half early. And so, that's, like, JBL being U.S.-based. You know, like, uh, you know, they make some stuff in Mexico. Uh, QSC is U.S.-based. Um mm -hmm. A lot of speaker companies, you know, the name brands you know and hear, uh, EV, um, they're US based, but it's so LD, components. Isn't LD Systems also like uh, somewhere out there on the East Coast? Yeah, LD Systems is, but some of the stuff is made in China. So uh, when I ordered my Maui 5 Go's, uh, those were made in China. Huh. This has a sticker right in the back of those, those and it took, uh, 
what I ordered them last year in July and I got them in October. So, and the bags came uh, in January. I ordered everything at the same time. So it's, it's one of the things that um, the supply chain issues and problems have been a hard problem for a while. And with everything going on, we, um, you know, as DJs have a hard time because it's, we're, we're trying to keep the right equipment and keep equipment in stock and make sure everything's working right. But also uh, getting new equipment is, is, is very difficult. You know, people who are running for the, the Rev 7, they had this, they had first shipment Rev 7s. Now people still want the Rev 7 and no one is, is coming into the Rev 7. They're like, hey, you know, um, we're going to go do this or go do that. You know, uh, they're going into other systems because they can't get hold of Rev 7 or they're on waiting lists, you know, um, a long waiting list. So it's, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, it's, it's very hard to get product right now um, for mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Can we talk about how shitty the, I'm sorry, how not great the, uh, the app, uh, the new wedding pro app is that combines the knot and wedding wire. I have a problem with it as well. It is so glitchy. It takes forever. I accidentally deleted the Knot app because I'm like, oh, they they remade the Wedding Wire app. It, it automatically updated. And now I'm regretting deleting the Knot app because it literally takes 20 to 30 seconds to load. And sometimes it doesn't even load properly. And it's just like, and, and then they tried to up my rate by $100 a month. And I told them like, you know, I was able to get it to, I don't need wedding. We, wedding wire is dead out here. Nobody, I, I haven't gotten a lead on wedding wire for five or six months, but I get one or two a day on the knot. And uh, because people make their wedding websites with the knot. So everything's all enveloped in that now. So I told him like, look, I don't need the wedding wire listing. Keep my rate the same and give me the knot. And they actually gave me like a $10 discount off of what I was paying monthly. Cause I don't need wedding wire anymore. So, uh, but it's just like the app that was before they updated the app. And I'm like, if I, if they updated the app before I could have had some more bargaining power and be like, look, this, this app is not a, it's not kosher. I I'm still using the old, uh, uh, the not wedding pro app versus the, the new one. Um, I, the wedding pro app just doesn't work right. Um, it, the, the, the app keep the old app keeps telling me to, uh, re, uh, um, to reload and into, uh, re uh enter my information so mm -hmm. i just bypass that and go back to when i get the uh information on the phone and i just open the, the little icon up uh, of course i get the email the normal email that yep. you know we get from the knot uh wedding wire i haven't really advertised with wedding wire um that's all i like time. back in the central coast wedding wire was like the thing and that's why you know i have like 77 reviews on wedding wire but nobody uses i Nobody uses wedding wire anymore, especially in this area uh, in Orange County. It's it's all the knot. So I, you know, the knot has always been the bigger of the two, and that's why it's funny. A wedding wire bought the knot, mm -hmm. uh, it bought XO uh, Communication, and it's like you know the little the little fish ate the big fish, and it's kind of funny because they, they 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 they're both the same. They charge the same amount. Um, hold on. I don't even have to use any of those apps. <laughs> yeah, you live in a small town. Too small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come come fall, I got a couple of wedding shows coming up too. So we'll see how those uh I've I've been able to get pretty good return on on the wedding shows. Um, but they're just so like they're always on Sundays, at least in this area, and they're always like you can only set up from like 7 a.m. to like 10 and they start at like 10 30 or 11 and I'm just like I don't get back till midnight the night before and now I gotta like get it you know I have a trailer because we bring the bring the big truss and the decent size setup and I'm like yeah they're 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 very stressful and I get them for free because the this one company like as long as I empty their fashion show like they'll give me a free booth which is great but it's also stressful because now I have to set up two setups one in the fashion show area and my my normal booth and i'm just like is it worth it i don't know see for me for uh for wedding shows you know i don't mind around sundays and i don't bring audio equipment in for the wedding show unless i'm going to do 
sound at the, the fashion part of it. I always just bring in, you know, the TV, I bring in brochures, I bring in all their stuff in, some up lights to give some ideas and have my tablet and have, you know, video on the TV sh uh, show and stuff going on. That to me is, is, is what I do at a wedding show. It's more or less so I can talk to people too and that drives my, um, my neighbors crazy because a lot of DJs come in, they bring equipment in. And again, who, no one's going to care about that you're um, able to do tricks and blend at a wedding show. They want to talk to you about what's going on. Exactly. Uh, and they're not going to care what kind of speaker you have either. They're going to care about what, you know, how can you take care of them? How can you make sure that their wedding <coughs> is going to be right and taken care of properly and make sure it's a perfect wedding for them? And Matt, it looks like the sun's coming in and it looks like you're like faded out. Oh. Hold on, let me let me close my blinds here. Uh, no, I'm just I'm I'm departing into heaven. Uh, well, hopefully not. Hopefully not yet. <laughs> you're you're turn too young. <laughs> let me turn my lights on here. There, there go. you go. Check out these cables. Ah. <laughs> wow. There you go. Hey, that's that's that. Ace shout hardware. Out shout out the rock. Yeah, man, I got a ton of them. I've got like four because they break all the time. Yeah, those are my favorite stands for fifty. I love them, man. Assist, and they they're they're yep. phenomenal. Stands. And I take all these the junk ones I have. I send them to rental people, yep. and then I use the hydraulic ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I tried. You know, I tried the I tried the uh, what are they ultimate support the ones with the, the split leg and uh, and the the air assist and I hated those. Those are like. The, the air assist is pointless because when you spread the legs out, the like resting position of the speaker stand is already high enough to where like you have to lift it up over your head anyway. So like, what's the point of, of the air assist to lift it up another? And then like, uh, I don't know, they, they're, I, I want to kind of try Like, that's the thing. I don't need the air assist. I just figured it would make life easier, but it actually made life way more tricky. So uh, the problem with the Rockville ones, see how there's no, they strip out. Uh, yeah. My problem well, is I have the, to clamp them yeah my mind the the legs come loose uh the little the nuts on the legs get loose every once in a while you gotta screw them in but uh and then my problem is the the plastic cap on top of where the the hollow pole that raises up is that sometimes breaks off or gets chipped and then your speaker is leaning or it's not and so that's i always have like uh i always have rubber shims in my dj bag so i can make everything look level that's the secret right there. Get the rubber shims. Not the there plastic. There you go. DJ tips are in a minute right there. Rig rubber, rubber shims. Shim. And make sure your speaker is level. Or just Pull buy a line array. You don't have to worry about that. No, no. See, but oh. my, like, knowing me, if I got, like, a, a line array, column array, like, guarantee I would get the one that, like, it's not perfectly straight for some reason. And that that's the other reason, like, I, I wouldn't want it. It's because, like, it would drive me nuts trying to level it perfectly. And uh, I don't know. I that The other thing is I already have so many subs that I, I can't justify buying a line array column array system because like, I don't need the sub like that. That's like the new, like RCF's new line, the TTM or whatever the new series is called. It's independent now. So like uh, each module has its own power. So like the top end and the sub has its own amp inside it. So you could buy them separate. Um, but at that point, like why not just get a normal point source speaker anyway? So I, I don't know. Like, I, I just like little speaker like i don't know maybe everybody here has the not everybody but a lot of djs here have the white of all 50s and yeah they look pretty but they're the sound is just not not loud and not good i, I just yep, there's I, a dj here that has those yeah and and people people here up light them like they oh god look at my nice beautiful white speakers and i'm just like until somebody kicks one of them and now you have a scuff on it. Would you it's use, nice with black. Because uh, uh, I have white RCFs. You can use uh, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to get the scuffs off. Really? Huh. Because I, I uh, if somebody like, you know, if, if I scuff one of my speakers, like I just use black Sharpie. And, and then if it's, what I like about the Birch cabinet is uh, it's literally the same material and same black color as uh, um Flex seal. So you could just spray with flex seal. And uh, I've, I've done flex seal too. When I had my uh, dancing on a cloud machine, the crappy one from China that ended up returning, when it got all scuffed up, I just sprayed it with flex seal and then let it dry and kind of blended it in and it looked brand new. That's how I make my flight cases stay nice looking too. Anything that's like black on the flight case, I just spray it with flex seal and wipe it. You know, another good thing to do, um, speaking of uh, little tricks, 
the um Spedlanger um yeah. sealer. Like I, I got a pickup truck, so um I I, I have a bed liner and spray and bed liners, you know, rhino lining. Companies will do your speakers. So if you want to get your speaker uh rhino line, I've done that before on a couple of uh, my JBLs. Um, I had them rhino lined and it was a couple hundred bucks. They did both speakers uh and they rhino lined the whole entire frame with it. And I never had scuff with the rhino lining on it. Never had scuff, never had it come off, nothing. And I, they were the toughest coating ever on a speaker was that rhino lining. And it was, it was absolutely really, really awesome. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's like anything else. Um, there's always tricks to everything. Uh, the plastic, the plastic speakers or plastic cabinets, use a heat gun. You can melt the plastic a little bit and reform it a little bit. You still see it up close, but, you know, most people are, uh, you know, not going to say, Hey, you have you come up to your dad and I go, Hey, you have a beautiful wedding. You did a beautiful job DJing, but you know what? That one speaker to the right was not exactly square. Right. That's a personal, it's a personal pet peeve. And this is one of the things that, you know, uh, they just did a dish jockey news um, not too long ago things, about things that other DJs notice. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's stuff that we notice as DJs because we're trying to be as, per, as close to perfection as possible. We're human, we make mistakes. We don't do everything hundred uh, percent, but you know it, it's one of the things. Taking that extra minute or two out and setting things up. There's Nathan, setting things up so we're set for success. That's a big thing. And again, have a nice, clean look. I I feel is a big thing. Having that beautiful, nice feel to it, I feel is a big thing. Uh, the the things that I don't like is when I see stuff that is just really trash. When people are just just don't care. Uh, they put extension cords up. And I'm actually going to share something with you guys. Um, like the stuff Rowdy and I see in the bad DJ setups group. <laughs> yeah, I got a bad DJ. Even my first setup when I was like 13, 14 looked better than any of those, man. Oh, yeah. And I was I, got some, I had some. Yeah. I, I mean, even my first setups weren't like, I mean, they weren't glamorous but at least i know like yeah. uh, cables dangle everywhere you know that's just like with these two right here i used to rock these puppies yeah. go hard so i'm gonna share this problem. with you guys and uh this is a nice thing also going over to, to zoom i can actually share pictures not holding my phone behind, behind the camera but this yeah. is a uh, a wedding uh another um i got this picture from a friend of mine uh, I, don't I'm not by me. I don't know who the DJ company is. You're wearing a uh, t-shirt. But one of the glaring things is <laughs> he is wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, he is wearing a t-shirt. But one of the glaring oh, things oh, that's that power trip. Oh. Hanging up in the air no. and the extension cord right there. And two lights. And yeah, he is wearing t-shirts. He has also has um a harbinger our center's best speakers ever harbinger at least at least it's the new harbinger and not the old ones <laughs> i like I, I really like the uh the knee hanging out um and then uh the next picture is uh, a little bit later on at night uh as you notice one oh. light is not working because i'm hey, can you guys hear me yeah we hear you Okay, I just figured this out. I, I can't see myself now. It told me I couldn't hear audio without having Wi-Fi, and now it says I can, so I, I don't know. I just got done mowing, now I'm getting ready to work on my garden. It's it's not been a good day. I had two breakdowns back-to-back. -back. Um, one breakdown can't be fixed till tomorrow, so another <laughs> breakdown took two and a half hours to fix. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, that stinks. Really stinks. How do you just hang your surge protectors, man? I don't understand it. I, I've seen that so much, like people using surge protectors as an extension cord. And it's like, I get it. If you're not smart enough to put those on, like I have tons of Y splitters. So like if I have two things to plug in, it's a black Y splitter and it's rated for 20, like it's a you know high rated wattage and it works great. I, I don't understand why so many DJs use the cable's 15 feet long. So why not just hang it? <laughs> so no, I, I use I like you have right there, DJ Rowdy. I have those, I have a bunch of those. 
uh, yeah. throw them in power strips. And okay. I, I hide them. I hide them on tables. I, I, it's got a 25 foot cord. So nine times out of 10, I can run it into the wall and it has a filter and a filter power. So you have clean power and then I can plug stuff in there. And that's usually what I do. Usually, you know, uh, uh, one speaker or two both speakers, uh, maybe both up lights, uh, the controller and the, the computer uh, and the microphone's plugged into there. And actually, uh, I'm almost done with my new rig. Um, and one of the things that, you know, I did like on this rig, I did like I did, did my original rig, I installed a Furman power strip in it. So I'll have six outlets to plug in and just have one cord coming out and I can hide it much more easier. Again, hiding cords is, to me is, is a kind of a good thing, an important thing, you know, to make sure stuff that is not seen, but still working. Um, and the plugs on them suck. I've replaced like two of the plugs. See how mine's different? Wow. The prongs, they always break off for me for some reason. Well, Nathan, um, he said he had a, a bad day with his regular business. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw his video today on the sheds, uh, lights he was using for truss warmers. Uh, I watched that video today as well. He's got a new camera, um, a new Sony camera, a mirrorless camera, which I thought was pretty cool. I saw ZV-10 takes very awesome video. And I, I was watching, I watched both of those today and the, the truss warmer from sheds, I, the, the, uh, the lights I liked. And... Uh, one of the things he pointed out in them, um, and I don't know, uh, what, uh, Matt, I know you used to. Uh, wait, 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 what, what, uh, what, what, what are you talking? What, what the video? Par, the par lights with aluminum frames. Oh, the par lights were not part of the aluminum frames. Those par lights are from uh, some other company. The aluminum frame that goes on the top was what, and that was from Pro-X, not Shed's. Well, I'm, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the lights. You're talking about the lights that Shed has. Oh, the only Shed lights that I had on my totems with that Pro-X deal on it was, um, which one was that? Oh, the 100 watt uh, moving head uh, from Shed's. The rest of them, the, the top one was the ADJ Stinger. It was on top. And then the... Uh, uh, I had one of those LED lights. Um, that was the the cheap. I mean, it's battery operated. I used them at my last event, and they're still holding the same charge. But I do have a new power light coming from from Sheds. It is water resistant, waterproof. So it will be in hopefully this week. Well, I know you're saying the some power lights I get from Shed has a metal frame. And I happen to have. Um, it looks like it's dead. <laughs> I happen to have. Uh, this is an actually an old ADJ uh, power light. This rigor plug in, not, not battery, not cool. This is just a uh, uh, light I have. I actually use here the light behind me when I do uh, my Twitch streams for music. And um, it's got all the, the ton of diodes. Is not the. It's not a hex or anything like that. So it's just. RGB, but one of the things is, it's a plastic frame, and the downside—the downside on it is that I don't feel is as robust as a metal frame is. But again, these lights I've had for I want to say 10, 12 years. You know, they, they have had them for a, quite a while these ADJs, and I will say um, they have stood the test of time. Um, they still work. They still work fine. Uh, again, I use them here when I, 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 I DJ on Twitch and up like behind me, have a little ambiance uh, here in the uh, DJ room um, in the office. But um, it is uh, one of the things that uh, I, I kind of want to get to a different light. And I've been uh, looking at sheds uh, for some stuff and see what uh, what they have exciting. Um, so DJ Rowdy, because I know you're well, it's order for me. I think well, they're, I'll, they're I'll working on they're working on getting an affiliate code so you guys can save money. Oh, cool. They've got some new stuff coming out. I know what it is, but I'm not allowed to say it yet. No, that's fine. Thing. But uh DJ Rowdy, I know that uh you in a uh, a smaller town uh, on there. you have different you know needs than you know 
someone in a large city like myself or, or Matt. And uh, DJ Fire is kind of the same boat you're in. He's in central Illinois, which is rural, a lot of farming, uh, a lot of small towns. Um, you know, events there, usually, you know, he doesn't do a lot of advertisement. He doesn't like not stuff like that. Probably wouldn't work for him because when you do it small towns, you're, you're, he's not, uh, he doesn't have to advertise like that. He can advertise more word of mouth than he does have to, uh, like us, cast a wider net because, you know, Chicago has, you know, uh, what, uh, 2.7 million people for the city. And you add the suburbs in and the, the color counties, like, uh, Myself, you know, you have probably, you know, 8 million people, 7 million people in the Chicago area. Uh, so it, it is a, um, a fairly big area. So the, the not for us works, just like Matt out in LA, you know, you have uh, LA area, you have, you know, 10 million people in LA County and the surrounding counties, you have 10, 12 million. Um, yep. Having that in a knot and whiting wire, stuff like that works for us. But how do you, besides, do you do anything else other than, um, Word of, mouth. word of mouth for advertisement for yourself i mean it's just facebook man that's where i get like all my weddings is from facebook i think Could it is word of mouth for here no a couple there's, over here uh, there's some, a lot of the parties come off of instagram but so you, you get instagram and facebook for parties and weddings and stuff okay yeah. uh dj fire <laughs> Uh, if you heard me or not talking about uh, how advertisement, do you advertise on Instagram or on Facebook or you just do uh, your YouTube channels? I do uh, Facebook, which if you have it, you can go like the DJ fire deal. It's not only for business, it's for people just to like. Um, uh, word of mouth, a lot of that stuff here, like, um, Clint, I need to talk to you here in a minute. Um, I'm out here. I don't know if I can spin this camera around and show you. Uh, this last week, I hope my garden comes out of this. Hold it. Whoa. Woo. How do I zoom myself out? <laughs> That's weird. How do you do that? What am I doing wrong? <clears throat> Did Maybe. you want wireless communication? There you go. I heard putting dust on my tomato. These are my all my tomato plants. We had seven and a half inches of rain in three days. Well, you guys got a bunch of rain. We, we don't have extremely much rain up here. But tomato plants out here and then um, green beans and all that. So I just got done mowing. So um, actually, zucchini doesn't drop in love water. So that's zucchini. Zucchini. Those are scorch. This one's showing a little bit of too much water. That's weird. Uh, this one's fine. This one's fine. And then it's like I could, maybe tomorrow it'll be firmed up enough. I can bring the tractor out here and break it up and let some air in. These are cucumbers. They're just not taking off. And these are pumpkins. So they're like, oh my God. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, DJ Mike James, um, has taken, he has done a lot. I don't know if y'all seen his last video with a Chautauqua. I think it's called Chautauqua or something. That that gig log is going to be really good. It's not until October, but that place is, if you haven't done so, go check out his newest video um, for that new venue that's over in Shelbyville, Illinois. It's about an hour from here, but very, uh, very nice um, venue. Um, so I really, uh, um, uh, he wants me to help him out. He wants to use some of my uplighting, uh, to uplight it, which, uh, I've actually been in contact with Rick Webb. Um, probably going to be switching to both lighting, um, on a few things just because they're a little cheaper. I think you can get me a five pack of the let, like basically the same kind of lights that look like I got from Shed six by 18. For like 500 and some dollars with the soft case, but I'm gonna see if he can get it a little cheaper and I'm just give me like an eight pack with a hard case and a soft case. Cause I've got four already. I'd like to have at least 12 of them. And I'm thinking about selling my rock wedges and my best par sixties. So if anybody's interested in those, uh, they're probably gonna be up for sale. Shipping is available for the right price. So 
or I could just drive Pretty down much. the uh, two and a half hours and uh, take you for lunch and buy them from you. <laughs> well, that's possible. I'm trying to get Mike to buy them because he's he's thinking about buying some of the mini S4s from Rick. He's been talking to Rick, but uh, I haven't uh, I haven't heard much anymore about that. I wish you all were closer. I'd say y'all come out here and help me pull weeds in the garden tomorrow. <laughs> I have dainty hands. They don't. They don't pull weeds. You know, it was weird because normally, normally when we do the t DJ roundtable, it's it's DJ Solstice. It's normally in a vehicle driving. But today it was me. That's only on Mondays. <laughs> I, I got I got a, a a thing on Monday more or Monday uh, Monday evenings. I'm always driving when at seven o'clock till seven. That, that's one again. One of the many reasons why I switched to Tuesdays at eight o'clock because a lot of things are going on. I always felt bad for man trying to eat and. You know, get called away and stuff like that. So it, it, there's a lot of things. So see, Tuesday, um, Tuesdays is uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, buy one get one. So uh, I always. Uh, oh, that is that. Tuesdays, isn't it? Uh. Yeah, so that's that's my Tuesday. But I, I always wait for my friend who gets off work at nine on Tuesdays, and we just go to Buffalo Wild Wings and grab a couple of drinks and some wings. And this is way early, so you have plenty of time to do that. And DJ exactly. Rowdy, you're uh, Mountain Time, right? You're one hour behind us. Yes. So right. it, you know, it's, it's seven o'clock was eight o'clock start time for you. So, um, then, how yeah. how does everybody like this platform better versus versus Instagram? Do you like this better than more? Or do you like Instagram better? I like it because, like, I mean, it's it's more like a show. Uh, I I mean, I kind of like the Instagram because we got people that pop in and ask questions, <clears> but <throat> at the same time, like all my wedding clients see it and I'm like, I don't really want them to see like <laughs> all my friends, yeah, and my friends join right. me, like, I want them to see my ugly face, you know? <laughs> Why? You're not, a good, you're not a bad looking guy. Well, here's, here's the I, other thing is that I do have up in the corner, the chat open. And that's why I was talking to DJ fire in the chat. So I do have the chat open to see people to chat. So again, we're I'm going to put this uh, recording onto Twitch. So it'll stay on Twitch. And I'm also gonna put it onto YouTube, so it'll be on the YouTube on my YouTube channel, and it'll be on Twitch. Um, and if you guys want to put it on your YouTube channel, just ask, and we can do a you know a share drive, and you know take the video and put it up there. Uh, that's not a problem. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, but this is this is hammer. something that you know I want to go forward with. Uh, I was hoping to have more DJs here tonight. Oh, there I didn't um, see you. One tomato falling over. It needs another stick. I was hoping to have more DJs here tonight, but again, this is the first one out of the gate. And again, I, I thank you guys, Matt. Thank you for inviting DJ Rowdy. DJ uh, Rowdy might be a uh, new guy on the DJ round table here. Uh, and then um, I, DJ Rowdy, you follow me on Instagram, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I guess uh, I guess send you a link for next week for uh, Zoom and go from there. And again, um, have that uh, great uh, fun stuff. Um, for meeting and having fun with everything, but like I said before, you know, this is the first one on Twitch, and um, again, the platform is uh, very, very cool. Um, if you have that done so already, if you have not watched me on Twitch, DJ, I do music videos on Twitch, um, so I usually have a theme. Uh, this past uh, Sunday was actually another DJ, I know who's passed away, uh, uh DJ Jimmy uh, Spins. Uh, James Apollo, he unfortunately uh, passed away <coughs> earlier this year, um, and a, a good friend of mine, and, and we did a tribute to him for his birthday this past Sunday. I did all Chicago, I did all freestyle, so it's all the 80s, 90s freestyle music, um, which You're right back, guys. Love. Jimmy and I always had arguments: what's freestyle, what's not. But um, I played a lot of stuff I know he liked. We talked about it. Um, other than that, uh, Matt. We know you're on Instagram. We know you're on YouTube. DJ Stoltz is on, on Instagram and YouTube. Where else are you on? Anything on the platform you're on? Um, Facebook. I don't, I don't really use Facebook. Facebook's kind of dead in this area. I mean, not in this area, but just I, I, other than the groups, I don't really, you know, I have a Facebook page, but like for, for DJing, like Instagram and uh youtube pretty much like i send everybody to instagram or youtube uh, i used to use snapchat a lot but i don't really i don't really use it anymore just because kind of got tired of tr trying to post things in multiple places i think instagram is like the best place for advertising because you know you could highlight your stories and things like that and it's just 
I don't know. I mostly Instagram. I, mean, I get a lot of people that like, not a lot, but I, I maybe get a couple leads uh, a week that saw me on Instagram um, and reach out, you know, through the DMs. But I also get a, like, you know, even, in, even though I'm in like Orange County, like you'd think people would have more money here. They're on as tight of a budget as you'd expect and not expect, but like a ridiculously tight budget where they don't want to spend more than like a thousand dollars for a DJ. And it's just like, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I get ghosted on Renaud and Instagram or wherever after I send my price listing. And I'm not even like my most popular package is like 1950. It's not that absurd, you know? Uh, and that, that includes sparklers and a whole, you know, standard lighting package. So like, you know, they're getting a lot, but. Uh, well, again, there's people, there's people who, you know, want to be cheap. They want the $300 DJ. They want to have someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And you get, they the just want a DJ. Earlier. Yeah. Uh, that, that right there, that, that why do you know those pictures are from, that's a DJ and actually the DJ who sent them to me, he bid on that wedding and they didn't never got a hold of them. So um, that the pictures, he, he got the pictures somehow of the DJ they hired. And obviously that's, that that's right there. It's, it's, if you want to talk price, that's what you get. It, it's, it, there's a huge difference between what the four of us do versus what something like that. Again, someone starting out, I understand, hey, you, 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 you got what you got you have what you have and you have to start somewhere, but you have to do certain things to make it look nice. You know, showing up professionally, you know, wearing t-shirts here on the show, it, 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 it's just relax. But when I go, you know, see a client in person or I go to a wedding, it's always a dress shirt, always dress pants. You know, you have to dress professionally. You can't just show up with jeans and a t-shirt or shorts and a t-shirt, unless it's that kind of wedding, you know, some weddings have that theme. And that's a thing they have, then fine and great. So you want to dress appropriately. The other thing is that you want to have some professionalism to you and you know go through things, not sit there and look like you're not even having fun or doing anything. You're just staring at the computer. And that's the thing is that you, you, you can tell, you know, professionals stare at the floor and watch the floors going on and go back and forth versus it look like him. I don't know if that's true the whole night. Again, I'm going off of two pictures. And I don't want to say, you know, it, it was the whole night, but if it's always just constantly staring at the computer, that's it. You're not watching the dance floor. You have no idea what you're, you have no idea what's happening and you don't have a happening dance floor. You know, you don't want to, you don't know how to DJ. DJ Rowdy, I know you're on Instagram. You have a YouTube channel. Nope. I haven't really got into YouTube, honestly. Oh man. He, I, lives, uh, he lives through mine. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. have to, uh, I have to jump off here fairly quick. I've got to have a meeting with uh, my other partner here. No, and, uh, but before you uh, go, DJ Fire, tell everyone where they can find you on YouTube, and you get two, your three channels on YouTube and Instagram. New Horizon Lawn Care, uh, which everything. If you go to my Nathan Two Four Three channel and you just stay on the homepage, don't click that says videos. Stay on the homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom, not all the way to the bottom, but almost all the way to the bottom. You'll see all my other channels. You'll see DJ Fire, New Horizon, Lawn Care. You'll see my girlfriend's channel. You'll see DJ Mike James' channel on there uh, and my product review channel on if you're on the other channels. But, uh, and of course, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Um, all my links. Hey, it's a big freaking lightning bug. <laughs> uh, all my YouTube videos have the links to everything in the descriptions. You can go find them there. Um, I kind of wanted to touch base a little bit real quick on what Matt was saying. I had a had a lady call me about a wedding live for next year. And what what do you tell people that ask you, like, you know, they'll say, like, you know, what's your prices? And then I say, well, what are you looking for? How many people are you going to have there? You know, how big of a package do you want? And then she was like, we're just looking for sound, no lights. Do you try to push some lighting? Because I, to me, I think a wedding reception without lights it's going to be boring. Suck. It's hard yeah, to suck. dance to music with no lights. You can have basic lights. You can say, okay, you get two, like, you know, I, you have two basic lights to say that's your two basic lights. You know, and again, you, that's why you have different packages. That's why I have, you know, a good, better, best package. A good package has some basic lighting. The better package has more lighting. And the best package has moving heads and so forth. So again, you have, you have your three levels. Your basic package has very, very basic lighting. Okay, yeah, yeah, it has 
two lights or has four lights. That's it. Well, that's, that's kind of what I told her. I was like, you know, you know, all my packages have lights in them, whether it's, you know, more lights, less lights. And she's like, well, we don't need any lights. Like she was trying to get me to drop my price, take the lights out. And I was like, well, I don't really do that. That's, you know, it doesn't, you know, if, if you don't take the, if you don't want me to bring the lights, that's fine, but you're still going to pay that basic price, you know? And she's like, you know, try, she's like, well, I'm going to call around and get other prices. And she's like, well, do you know what other DJs are charged? And I said, well, I said, I know sound source, which is a big sound music store. They have DJs. They're charging their basic package is $1,700. I do believe. And she's like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I said, I don't, and they're booking left and right. And I said, I can't hardly book at that price. I tell somebody that, hey, you know, 1700 bucks, and they just laugh at me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to jip you. That's just, you know, I, I, I mean, Mike's picking up a lot of, a lot of gigs. I'm very impressed with how many. He's got seven or eight now. This fall is going to be busy for him. Um, like I say, I've got one in September 30th. I'm booked two weekends in a row, 24th and 30th now. I just booked one last week for a small wedding at a, at a state park, so that's going to be different. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, ceremony music with the uh, Eons, um, and then be having a, a smaller setup underneath the pavilion. I think they're getting a tent, so I don't know if they're going to have me in there under the tent, whatever. And then I've got a wedding in October. Um, I've got a class reunion on September 24th. I've got another couple talking to me about a wedding in October. So, and then I've got uh, where I did the, the unforgettable prom. That's, that's where I go to church now. And uh, the assistant pastor approached me Sunday and they're having a back to school rally. So I'm going to be DJing that. I've actually got a meeting with him tomorrow to discuss the details, but I think I'm going to be doing that. So that's, that's kind of fun. I'm excited for that to DJ for kids and to kind of make them feel happy about going back to school. Good, good, good. So I, you know, I get, I, I have a wedding this Saturday. I have a wedding Monday. I have a wedding next Saturday and then next Thursday. I have right now, look at the schedule. I have 20 weddings still on the schedule for this year. And I have already done what buddy you well, are to me you are like the i don't know i wish i had your talent or was well, that closer over to 13 you? i i just wish that I, I could be booking that much i mean if i could book that many weddings i'd probably quit doing lawn care i probably would because i'm sure i can make more money at dj well actually i did last year last year was my busiest year i don't know if it was because of my first year or what like i said i started during the year of covid and only had two gigs um but um I, I just, you know, I've got a, I've got 58 weddings this year. I'm up to. Woo! So, and that's just me. I've got another probably 12 that my other guys are doing. That's nuts. I actually have, have talked to Rick Webb about maybe me trying to do um, Christmas lighting. Cause I know he does it. And he's like, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, you can take those, the par lights or, or buy those waterproof par lights oh, and yeah. Christmas lights. He said, you can make a killing off that. And I said, well, I just don't know how many people around here would, would pay to have that done professionally. You got to have so, some people who have some are more affluent in those areas you target. Yeah, you know, like in my farmer my Bob's not going to pay for that. No, my my gated community where my parents live, like they everybody has, you know, installed lights. And uh, my parents try to get me to put up our lights. And I'm like, I can't make them look that nice. <laughs> me and a staple gun is not going to make them look like a professionally done setup. I don't know, man. I, you might be able to do it. Might be able to pull it away. Like, pull on, like. All right. Well, DJ Fire is going to go in to uh, do his stuff for his business, uh, and we're going to get off here because he's on his ATV out there. Uh, DJ Rowdy, thank you so much for coming in tonight, sir. I will be contacting you to get you on a roundtable for next week. Matt, I'll see you next week. Um, pay attention to the only thing I say is pay attention to the time because we come in a little earlier so that way we can get everything all set up and go through everything and uh, kind of discuss a couple things beforehand so please be on time other than that guys I can't do this without you thank you so much uh, I'll get this up on YouTube probably the next day or so uh, and again I'm going to put a post up here on Twitch 
as a recording on Twitch's page. Uh, so people will come to it and see it and, talk, and see the round table. And um, I know people were supposed to tune in tonight, but uh, we didn't get too many people. We had uh, some people watching. And right now I have, let's see, lurkers. Uh, these are people who are not signed in, but they're watching one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight lurkers out there. Uh, so there's people watching there, not signed in um, onto the channel as a follower. So we do have some people watching tonight. So um, hopefully they'll tune in for next week for the next round table. Again, next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, DJ round table. We do this every Tuesday and uh, unless a holiday or something's going on, you know, Christmas or whatever. Um, then we don't do something on that, on that holiday day. But um, we are here. And uh, again, if you have not done so already, follow us, go through our social media. Again, YouTube, Facebook, follow us everywhere. And again, I'm on Twitch at uh, TVM Productions underscore buddy. And you can follow this video here and you can follow the rest of all the videos, watch it new in real time. And if you're on YouTube watching this, again, Go over to Twitch and subscribe to uh, our Twitch channel so you can ask questions and be part of it and uh, be interactive. So, again, guys, I can't thank you enough. You guys have a good night. Um, and then this year. All right, guys, have a good night. See you next week. Yeah, we will see you next week. All right. Don't forget to keep second. those records spinning, and we'll see you in the next one. All right. Hold on <laughs> a second.